On July 20th, 1969, masses crowded into Times Square, Central Park, Trafalgar Square, the city centers of the Soviet Union, North and South Vietnam, Hong Kong, and other places around the world. They gathered to watch Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin start their descent to the lunar surface. All told, 650 million people shared that experience, watching and listening in theaters, taverns, airport and train terminals, and at home, in wonder and awe, as Armstrong stepped onto the moon and declared, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong's small step and mankind's giant leap were the culmination of 300,000 people's efforts, employed by 20,000 industrial firms and universities, integrated into collective action for that common purpose. In fact, just broadcasting Armstrong and Aldrin's landing and excursion required more than 100 people, mostly young people in their early 20s, who staffed tracking stations in Australia, receiving and processing the multiple signals being transmitted from 250,000 miles away. So those hundreds of millions could see and hear them wherever they were. All that was accomplished less than nine years after President John F. Kennedy addressed a congressional joint session in May 1961 and put forth the challenge, before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. This magic of collective human endeavor isn't just for the extraordinary. It can also be found in the seemingly mundane, Consider that right now, across the world, there are millions of people preparing their medication for the day. They are each shaking out a pill from a bottle and taking it with a glass of water. One of those millions might be taking medication to help relieve symptoms of her cardiac disease, helping her live a more fulfilling, healthier life. Just as all the other medications being shaken out of all those other pill bottles right now will help all the other people live more fulfilling, healthier lives. Those common medications, which convert diseases that were once horrific and terminal into conditions that can be managed, if not cured, aren't simple or easy to create. They are made possible by thousands of person years of work, spread across a decade and performed by myriad specialists, chemists, biologists, pharmacologists, computational biologists, medicinal chemists, logisticians, clinical trial managers, doctors, nurses, computational chemists, data scientists, software engineers, and production experts. All their contributions are integrated and harmonized into the invention, production, and provision of that pill. All that distributed genius, thousands of people working toward a common goal, inventing in parallel with individual teams each working on their challenging problems and knowing that their efforts are important and fit into a larger goal, all that came together, be it in that small step on the moon or in that medication shaken out of a bottle. Both are pinnacle accomplishments that organizations achieved and that no single individual could have imagined doing alone. Many of us have been lucky enough to work on projects like these once in our career, and it was likely the most rewarding experience of our life. Not because the job was easy, but because the job was challenging and involved solving problems and conquering challenges much larger than ourselves. For example, I, Steve, once mentioned to my Uncle Larry that I'd seen an SR-71 Blackbird spy plane on the deck of the Intrepid Aircraft Carrier Museum. That was the greatest program I was ever part of, he said. His comment surprised me. He and my Aunt Diane had moved to California to work on that project when they were very young. He was a newly minted electrical engineer, and it was hard to imagine he had that much responsibility within such an enormous undertaking. But I'd missed the point. It wasn't his part that was great. It was the larger whole that gave the experience such meaning. 